Another one of my children's pythons just laid a clutch of eggs. She had some of these eggs wrapped up pretty tight, which made it a little bit tricky to get her off them. She laid a total of nine eggs. However, only six of those eggs were good. The smaller, browner eggs are slugs, which are eggs that were never fertilized. So no baby snake is growing inside. During the process of collecting these eggs, some of the eggs rolled around, so I'm going to have to candle them to ensure that the embryo is facing up. This first egg has a ring, but there's no network of veins, so I'm not sure if it's going to make it through incubation. The next egg looks good. The next egg looks like it's a little out of position. You can see that the embryo is positioned to the side, so I'm going to rotate it slightly and remark it. Over the years, I have found that if the embryo is positioned in the upper one-third portion of the egg, it has a better chance of making it through incubation. However, typically, I'll mark the eggs as I find them, and I'll only consider repositioning them if I find them very early on or if they accidentally roll and I don't know which way is up. I just had another clutch of children's pythons hatch, and it took them about 43 days, so I expect these to do the same. These children's python eggs are on day 27 of incubation. And I noticed that one of the eggs is covered in mold. After taking a closer look at the egg, I could tell that this egg has gone bad and there's no saving. Whenever there's an unfortunate event, we should always take the time to try to learn from it. So I'm going to cut this egg open to try to better understand what caused it to go bad. Using a very sharp pair of scissors, I cut a piece of the eggshell off, doing my best not to damage anything inside. Most of the yolk inside of this egg had already solidified, which tells me if there was any Anything living inside it passed away a few weeks ago. I decided to go back and cut the entire eggshell off. These eggs are on day 27 of incubation and it usually takes them about 45 days to hatch. So if there is a baby snake inside, it should be pretty well developed. When I peeled the eggshell off, I didn't see anything that resembled a snake. However, I did see one little pink dot, which you don't see in a slug or a completely unfertilized egg. Which tells me that this egg was fertilized, just not well enough for it to take. So unfortunately, it went bad. I opened this children's python egg up to get a closer look at what was inside. These eggs have been incubating for 43 days now, so they should be hatching any time now. At first it didn't look like much was going on with the eggs, but then I took a closer look. I noticed that two out of the three eggs had already pipped. I separated these two eggs so I could open the egg up a little bit wider to get a closer look at what was going on inside. The eggs separated from each other very easily, and since they already started pipping, there is really no chance of it harming the baby inside. You could see that the baby snake used its egg tooth to make four or five five slices in the egg. So utilizing what the snake already made, I'm going to use a pair of scissors just to open the egg up a little bit wider. You may see a little bit of red. That's not an injured snake. It's just from the veins on the inside of the eggshell. If you watch some of my previous videos, you could see those veins when I candled the egg. As soon as I went to put it down, this little snake popped its head out of the egg to see what was going on. And this little one is absolutely adorable. I'll put it back in the incubator with the rest of its clutch mates. I'll give them some time to crawl out and we'll check up on them again tomorrow. This was terribly unfortunate. And the worst part is that I don't even know why this happened. Yesterday, one of our children's pythons pipped, and today it was out of the egg. It's a beautiful little snake, and it looks strong and healthy. But I noticed something was still inside of the egg. And inside, I found a solidified matter, similar to what you would find in an egg that has gone bad. And it didn't look right to me. So at that point, I decided to cut the other eggs open to check on the snakes. At this point of incubation, the snakes are fully developed, and they're already pipping, so it's safe to cut the eggs open. We saw that this snake pipped just yesterday. Yesterday. So using the slice that the snake already made, I'm going to open it up a little bit wider. Inside, I saw the same solidified mass, but when I touched the snake, it wasn't moving at all. Which is incredibly frustrating because yesterday it was healthy enough to pip on its own. Since something strange was going on with both eggs, I decided to cut the third one open. I was hoping for the best, but I was prepared for the worst. I slowly and carefully cut open the egg, ensuring that I don't harm the snake. This egg didn't have as much solidified yolk, but the snake had already passed away, and I don't know why. This children's python hatched two days ago, but sadly, all of its clutch mates have passed away. I'm still not too sure why they passed away, but I'm going to keep an extra close eye on this little one to make sure it's developing properly. You're probably wondering why I have it inside this little container. Well, children's pythons are incredible escape artists, and this little one already escaped once outside of its normal enclosure. So I'll keep this little one inside of this container until it sheds and has a few meals. By then, it should gain some size, so it won't be able to squeeze out. And in the meantime, I'll work with the snake regularly to give it enrichment and some exercise. You can see that right out of the egg, these snakes will try to climb anything they can. Their ability to climb, coupled with the fact that they're very small, makes them excellent escape artists. With a total of four escapes, a children's python holds the record for the most escapes in the Molinero Snake Lab. But regardless, children's pythons are one of my favorite little python species. In about five to seven days, this little one should have its first shed, and then we'll offer it its first meal.